Good morning, everybody. Pastor John here from New Life Church in Owaka, Washington, and this is the message for Sunday, April 2nd, 2023. Now, my message this morning is going to be relatively brief, but I want to convey a very simple truth that I hope is something that can really stick with you, that will become part of your spiritual maturity. You'll be able to utilize the truth from God's Word forever in your walk that you will see today as a catalyst for the Holy Spirit to move on your behalf, hopefully for the rest of your life. Now, go ahead, grab your Bible, and join me in Luke chapter 8. <clears throat> and I've taught from this passage of Scripture before, but in Luke chapter 8, starting in verse 40, this is what we read. Now, when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house because his daughter, a girl of about twelve, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told, what she, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Now, like I said, I've taught on this passage of Scripture before. <clears throat> There's enough detail in Luke's account for us to know a couple of things. Uh, we know that this lady has been suffering for 12 years with this particular issue where she continues to bleed. And she is desperate to be healed. I... I want to keep this as simple and as relatable as possible. So I need you to hear something. Her infirmity was holding her back. She was not able to do really anything for the kingdom in the state that she was in. She wasn't supposed to be out in public. She wasn't supposed to be interacting with people. And almost every aspect of her life would have been dictated by her physical condition. Now, how many of you can relate to that? How many of you have a physical limitation that you feel is holding you back from being able to do kingdom work? You feel like you're being held back from life. You feel like you can't do the things that you need to be doing <clears throat> or want to be doing. Excuse me. Now, she knows if she can just touch the edge of Jesus' cloak, the healing is available. But I want to ask you, how did she know that? Where, where was that written? Where was the instruction manual on receiving healing by just touching the edge of Jesus' cloak? Were there some sort of testimonies going around? Was there a rumor that said, if you could just touch Jesus' cloak? We, we don't know. Scripture doesn't say. It's not definitive on that. There's nothing in Scripture that, that says that that's the case. Yet somehow, she knows that if she can just desperately reach out and touch the edge of Jesus' cloak that forever her life will be changed. Now I want you to look at a portion of this story again. Verse 44 says that she came up behind him, touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. How did she know that? <clears throat> because I don't think that she looked... <laughs> I don't think that she's, uh, if she's not supposed to be out among people, I don't think that she would have taken notice that whatever uh, this issue of blood is, that it was something that, that she would expose where everybody could see her. Of course not. So how does she know that the bleeding stopped? Yet, she knows. She knows that she's been healed. And we know that because the next thing that happens is, in verse 45, Jesus asks, who touched me? But Jesus said, someone touched me. I know that the power 
has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. She knew that she had been instantly healed. So there had to be some kind of a physical indication. And so I'm, I'm just really curious, and, and I hope that you are too. What did she feel? What did she experience? What was the sensation that allowed her to know that she had been healed? Now, Scripture isn't specific, except that we know that she knew. And then in verse 48, Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. So what was the catalyst for her healing? It was her faith. Jesus didn't have to pray for her. Jesus didn't even have to touch her. She was healed because of her faith. In Acts 19, verses 11 and 12, we get an even stranger account relating to healing. In Acts 19, <clears throat> verse 11, it says, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick, and their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. Same thing. Paul didn't have to pray for these sick people. He didn't have to touch them directly. All he did was touch some handkerchiefs, and sick people were healed, and demon-possessed people were set free. Now, who did that? The answer is in the text. It says in verse 11, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. So how do you think that the recipients of those handkerchiefs and aprons were healed? Was it Paul's sweat? I mean, did demons evacuate people because of, I don't know, Paul's cooties or something? Absolutely not. It's God who does the healing. It's God who sets people free. And it's because of the faith that people took handkerchiefs and aprons to these sick people to begin with. They had hope. And they had faith that their friends and family could be healed. The Bible doesn't give us a, a specific instruction here. He doesn't say, go grab all your handkerchiefs and all your aprons and run them past Paul and everybody's going to be healed. But in fact, the Bible doesn't even tell us, <clears throat> I'm not sure what the word is here, statistically, uh, it doesn't give us a specific rate of healing. Nine out of ten people who touched Paul's Holy Spirit-infused aprons were healed today. It, it, it doesn't say that. We just know that some people were. But I think we have to understand that for this to be part of the ministry that God does through Paul, it has to be a direct result of faith. The Holy Spirit inspired someone to do this. There had to have been a first time. There was a, a point where the Holy Spirit said, just go get that handkerchief that Paul's been using and, and take it to your sick friend. And they did, and somebody was healed. And then from there, I think very much like the woman with the issue of blood in Luke, it had happened before. Somebody experienced healing that way. And so she got in her mind that if she could just touch the edge of Jesus' cloak, that she would be healed. <clears throat> so somebody was healed by touching one of these handkerchiefs. And the word gets out. The message goes forth. And so people begin to use this new method, this new tool, for the Holy Spirit to ultimately heal someone. But I ask you, why can't God continue to heal that way today? Well, clearly he can. Can God heal someone through a handkerchief that a minister touched? Of course he can. Or did it have to just be just Paul? Absolutely not. But it has to be a, a pastor of a big church, though, right? I mean, a little church isn't going to do. Who says it has to be a pastor at all? The same Holy Spirit that's in our ministers should be in you, and it should be the Holy Spirit who's doing the healing. The Holy Spirit can work through anybody. So it ultimately comes down to simply obeying the Holy Spirit. 
He may ask you to touch a handkerchief or an apron and take it to a sick person or a demon-possessed person and see that person healed or set free. He may ask you to take a handkerchief or an apron to your pastor or to another minister and have them touch it or pray over it so that it becomes an extension of the Holy Spirit and someone can ultimately be healed from that. But he may, he may tell you to take your friend down to the local pond and have them dunk in the pond seven times because the Lord used a, a method like that in Scripture before as well. Whatever it's going to take is what we need to be willing to do. The Holy Spirit honors our obedience. And so whatever he tells us to do is how he wants to heal you or heal your friend. And healing will not occur if we don't obey. And we won't obey unless we believe. What I need you to do today is believe. Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Wherever you are right now, God can heal you. I don't need to come where you are. <clears throat> I mean, he can do it. I, I reach up and, and I touch the Mevo microphone. Here it comes. Here it comes. Ah! All right. So I'm touching Mevo. Is that the connection point that you need? If you reach out and touch your screen, is that what's necessary for your faith to be inspired to believe that God can heal you? If that's the case, I'll touch it again. There you go, okay? But listen to me. That's not necessary. You don't have to touch a handkerchief. You don't have to touch an apron. If that's what the Holy Spirit has asked you to do, then do that thing. He may tell you to, to see your friend set free or to see your friend healed, to go and to take this particular handkerchief or apron, have your pastor touch it, and then extend it to your friends so that they can be healed. That may be the method he chooses. If so, listen to the Holy Spirit. If you find yourself today feeling discarded and useless, unable to be put to work by the kingdom because of the limitations of the infirmity that you are facing, that there is some disease or illness or sickness, and it doesn't have to be just in physical our minds can hold us back. If you need healing today, God is still able to heal. I'm a walking testimony of healing. And I can assure you that God still heals people to this day. The Holy Spirit can heal you. It might be as something as simple as a prayer. And we're going to close in prayer in just a minute. It might be something that simple. Or he might need you to do something that requires your obedience. Seek the Holy Spirit and ask him what's necessary for your healing. He may ask you to go dunk in the local pond seven times. That's just one way he may choose to heal you. Whatever he tells you, do it. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. If he's told you just to touch the hem of a garment, because that's the method that he wants to use, if he tells you to go to a specific church and have a specific person pray for you, then do that. Or maybe he wants you to be the instrument that he uses to heal somebody else. Maybe you need to go and pray for someone today. Lay hands on them, anoint them in oil. Another way that God healed people in Scripture. Whatever it is that the Holy Spirit's calling you to do, do it so that they or you can experience healing. Your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> there are people watching who need healing, and I know that you are able. I ask in the name of Jesus that right now you heal bodies. I ask that you calm minds I ask that you remove addiction. I ask that you set people free from addiction, that you break those chains, and that you no longer allow the enemy to have a place in their life. I ask that you set people free from demonic influence, that they will no longer be subject to that attack, but instead will walk 
in true freedom. I ask that you restore bodies so that people can do the work of your ministry and your kingdom. That they won't have limitations, but instead they'll be equipped with a testimony of your healing power that they can then carry to others so that their faith can be emboldened and they can be healed. And Lord, if there is an instruction that you have given someone today, Holy Spirit, I ask that you make those instructions plain and clear and that you have give people the courage to go and do what it is that you've instructed. Maybe they do need to take a handkerchief or an apron to a friend. Maybe they need to make multiple steps to accomplish whatever it is that you want them to do. But I ask that you give them the gumption and the courage to obey you so that their friend can be healed or set free. We give you all the glory. We thank you for healing and the work that was accomplished on the cross. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us today. If you experience healing after having your faith emboldened by listening to this message, will you please let us know what healing you have experienced in the comments section? If your friend is healed, will you come back later in the week and let us know what the Holy Spirit asked you to do, what you did, and how that person was healed or set free? I want these comments following this message to become a place where people have their own faith bolstered because they see that God is still healing, that God still does these things. So if you experience healing, please let us know in the comments section following this message. I love you guys so much, and I hope to see you next week for Resurrection Sunday.